Hello, and welcome to a continuation of Oracle's virtual event series. My name is Chris Graham, and today our topic as part of the performance management series is intelligence and planning and forecasting, data analytics and optimization. I've been at Oracle for just around the past year, and true, it's been a bit of a bumpy ride. But prior to that, I spent over 20 years in banking across various functions. Most recently, I was head of the loss forecasting platform build team for the wholesale credit bank at JP Morgan. What do people say about planning and forecasting? Here's a few fun quotes that I've found in researching. By failing to prepare, you're preparing to fail, said by our own Benjamin Franklin. A good forecaster is not smarter than everyone else. He merely has his ignorance better organized. While I particularly like that one, unfortunately it's from Anonymous. And lastly, it is far better to foresee even without certainty than to not foresee at all. On repoint care. So clearly it's a bit of a mixed bag. So let's see if we can help sort that out a bit. Let's talk first about the challenges. One of the biggest challenges that we see is that there's, there's no single source of truth. Applications often have different starting points, whether it's with data or whether it's with various economic inputs. And sometimes these processes come with different results. And changes often aren't persisted across the applications. Next, we have the inflexibility of the applications or models themselves. Oftentimes, models and apps are black boxes that don't lead themselves easily to changes, adjustments, or even stressing. This is usually found in combination with process flows that are also set in stone. Next, systems connectivity is an issue that I've seen quite often. Along with some of the data challenges that we have up front, where often applications are siloed or standalone. There's, this is done without a thought to creating a flow. And the flow in, in this case is usually nothing more than running a, a number of different apps and then having people link them together manually in the back end. And th that linkage is usually pretty painful and time consuming. All this is, is done in order to just get a final result not with any mindset, is to, to create valuable data or actionable data. Now, somewhat more specifically around planning and forecasting, you need robust scenario analysis. How can you forecast if creating scenarios is, is that big of a challenge? Or if you have issues in running multiple variants of a scenario in, order, in an orderly and timely fashion? Another thing is that, that's usually missing is being able to review the differences and the drivers across both the scenario or input data and then the subsequent results. Lastly, with regard to challenges, is there a more powerful orchestration engine in place or are we relying on someone to stitch all the results together? Are there limitations to the amount of analysis we can do or run based on the process or the setup or the, the computing resources? And are, are we integrating new and advanced techniques such as artificial intelligence and machine learning? At the end of the day, do we have a configurable flow that can easily optimize to a target? Now, Oracle's thought about this, and we've, we've come up with some, some responses and really some solutions with regards to these, these problems. So, you know, what do we do at the end of the day? How do we set ourselves up for success here? Well, we want to start with the data. We want to create a purpose-driven data foundation, store all of the data, whether it's input, intermediate, or, or results data, and make sure we provide this across all the applications. We need to be able to create a single source of truth. What are the Oracle solutions here? Well, we have the Financial Services Data Foundation. This is a, a very much a purpose-driven data store in order to create a number of elements across all of the financial services needs. Um, and then associated with this, we have our data integration hub. As we have many different partners with myriad systems and data sources, the data integration hub is really the, the main tool in order to be able to take these, these outside or these external data sources and to be able to make sure that the, the, the data is cohesively and sensibly fit into the data store or the data foundation. Um, this is done through a lot of the tooling and the upfront work with the data integration hub. On top of this, we want to layer a modular and configurable framework. Let's bring all of the applications needed to do the planning and the forecasting into one native ecosystem. We need to allow the flow of both internal, namely Oracle apps, as well as something external that will support client and third party calls. We wanna make it fully customizable and put the user in the, in the driver's seat here. What are the Oracle solutions? The backbone of our OFSA product or our Oracle Financial Services Analytical Applications is really the analytical application infrastructure. 
This is, this is the backbone on which all of our ecosystems of over 60 different applications are built. Along with this as an extension comes the process modeling framework. Uh, this is a very complex and capable system of uh, user created process flow creation. Uh, the process modeling framework does allow internal and external calls. So whether or not a client has a third party system, be it a vendor, another vendor system or anything proprietary on their side, that they're able to build it into this process flow and call it and receive and send data natively. Uh, and likewise, we, this still configurable framework still connects to our financial services data foundation. Flexibility by design allows for scenario design studio and enhancements. We need to ensure that flows are modular as well as adjustable. Review and analysis must be baked into the so solution natively. Um, we, we need to make sure that we have all sorts of interchangeability and, and configurations. Um, we really want to be, be put as much thought into allowing the user to drive the process. Here, we're really talking about some of our engines, right? Our balance sheet planning, our funds transfer pricing, and some of the future design that we're currently working on, whether it's in the asset and liability management uh, application or some of the balance sheet planning. And lastly, if we want to extract the most benefit, we must create it with the latest technology built in. We need orchestration engines that are allowing for intelligent processing and scalability. We need optimization solutions that put to the capability to run multiple analyses in the business user's hands. And finally, we need to program it all in such a way so that we have an aim to have artificial intelligence and machine learning driving solutions and creating differentiation rather than being a plug-in or an afterthought. Here, a lot of the, the programs that we've mentioned before, but the process modeling framework the balance sheet planning, the analytical application infrastructure, but finally the model management and governance, which allows for a lot of the next gen level capabilities to be harnessed uh, directly by the user. One of the things to note here is that there is quite a bit of overlap. As we think about the different pieces that we need in, in this type of infrastructure, we recognize that uh, all these products need to work together. Uh, that's why they're all built off of the same backbone, namely the AAI, as well as all serviced by the same data store or the financial services data foundation. So what's the Oracle solution look like? Well, it's built first off of a number of different product areas and different segments to solve for this. The first of which is our risk management area covering treasury services, risk management and capital adequacy and planning. We also have our performance management suite. Um, these are the areas where we look at balance sheet planning, funds transfer pricing, uh, and things like Profitability Manager, along with our performance analytics. We also have customer insight tools. These are different performance analytics suites, be they institutional or retail, um, and a lot of different customer analytic capabilities that are pre-built. Then we have a financial crime and compliance management suite, most of which is not utilized in this case, uh, but in some cases might, may provide security and audit controls. These four, as we think of this Venn diagram, allow us to incorporate a lot of, of different aspects in order to achieve different goals, whether it's some of the IFRS goals, whether it's risk adjusted performance, um, things like stress testing and profitability or, or relationship pricing. Uh, you can see that there's, there's an intentional amount of overlap here. The overlap is meant for the ecosystem to work together, to be based off the same backbone and to be accessing the same data store. Let's talk a little bit about what intelligent planning and forecasting means with respect to distributed planning. First off, one of the differentiators of the Oracle planning and forecasting solution is that it provides for a distributed planning capability. Really having the lines of business determine their own planning and business level assumptions. All this is being done, however, while maintaining a common cash flow engine, common input data, but still maintaining a granular level of planning. This allows the lines of business planning levels to be aggregated and then brought back to a centralized planning view. So what could the intelligent planning and forecasting process look like? Is there, is there a workflow that we can look at or how can we think about this from a customer's perspective? Well, we start with the parameters and the balance sheet. Here, the user will be able to create or tweak scenarios and implement adjustments to the inputs and models. 
Then we want to calculate and produce results and, and data. This will be the full set of calculation results and output, but placed back into the data foundation, which is really our pre-built data model. Then we need to review and analyze the advanced suite of performance analytic tools, often with pre-built reports and insights. And finally, we want to integrate into our planning and strategy. So taking the results of all the prior calculations to help feed the planning and strategy applications, but using data with a known lineage and a known purpose. And this is a very simplistic flow to talk about intelligent planning and forecasting. But the idea being that we want to start from the data and we really want to end up with the data. And the data that we're ending up with here is the actionable data out of our analysis and review that allows for intense investigation, insight, and strategy. What's a peek into how this can be done? We need to be able to dynamically change items or assumptions on the balance sheet, all while maintaining a valid connection between our assets and liabilities. We can then review results of these scenarios and these changes after the calculation and the projections of and the interdependencies, and even look to run optimizations for desired target variables. Okay. I understand I've talked a lot about this, but what, what does intelligence mean in this space? What are the aspects of, from the status quo that are different? We look at it as four main areas. We really wanna have a defined and controlled planning process. Gone are the days of, of best guess, back of the envelope or, or brute force. This can be done in an interconnected way to run planning based on existing calculations and shared assumptions. Overall, one of the biggest benefits may be that of the repeatability. Integration is another key to intelligent planning and forecasting. We want to leverage a unified platform to ensure consistency of both data and results. Flexibility. As, as talked about before, we need to put the user in the driver's seat to make changes as often as needed and allow for review and rerun both through audit trail and governance as well as scalability of compute resource. And lastly, incorporate advanced tools, help to future-proof our solutions such that capabilities like machine learning and artificial intelligence are built within the overall framework and can seamlessly be woven into the fabric of, of all the models and applications as we go forward. We talked a lot about the, these advanced technologies. Let's talk a little bit more about what the advanced technologies actually are. Robotics, here, here we're really talking about robotic process automa autom automation which is automation of, of all the different tasks that we, we normally expect either analysts or, or people to do, the, the linking of these tasks and, and really making sure that all the data is put in the right places. Um, we wanna do this in an advanced way and we wanna incorporate this as part of our overall workflow management. So we wanna make things easier, quicker and, and very error less. Machine learning, um, we're currently undergoing a, a machine learning exercise around our prepayment modeling along with our non-maturity deposit calculations. We're actively searching out different use cases. Um, we're trying to partner with clients and partners along the way in order to understand what their needs are. Um, we're trying to utilize all of the capabilities of Oracle in this space in order to do it in the most intelligent and sensible manner. Optimization. So we really want to have multi-scenario multi user-driven balance sheet optimization. Uh, it's one of the things we've talked about for a while, but the idea being is that we're, we're going to have to create many different computations in order to get this, this, this done across all of the different variables and inputs, as well as the calculations and applications. Um, in the stress testing space, we want to do very complex what if and how so analysis. Uh, we think that this is going to be capable to increase anything from standard stress testing, uh, where there may be risk appetite, CECL type runs, all the way out to uh, stress testing on a line of business level for different products and or uh, scenarios. And lastly, deep learning and artificial intelligence. We want intense levels of correlation identification across both variables, inputs, drivers. Uh, we want intelligent scenario creation um, to be able to have the machine itself help us to create scenarios that are econometrically sound. And then lastly, having drivers and sensitivity reviews such that we can make sure that we have a, a robust view of what our applications are and what the calculations are, are doing and what the inputs say about those, those results. Once we solve for the basics, then we can open up to the second order needs like sensitivities, attribution, and what if. 
sensitivities start with disparate data sources and ingestion. Uh, this is the case across attribution and what if as well. Um, sensitivities are really going to be highlighting how our input data changes and can impact our target variables. Attribution helps us to understand the overall movement of result from one calculation to the next. And finally, what if allows us to run our own scenario views to realize and plan for different outcomes. These are all the user driven analysis and tools that, like, as I mentioned previously, are, are second level. Um, this is going to help guide and further give insights um, through our robust analytical tools and reporting. And finally, uh, helping to drive our strategy and planning. All of this further complements uh, our aforementioned capabilities and generally helps us understand the data and the results more deeply. Where is all this used? As we reviewed previously, balance sheet planning is a natural fit. But we can also dig into things like the impact of our funds transfer pricing changes on the P&L. Stress testing is clearly a fit as well, whether we're talking about CCAR, DFAST, IFRS 9, CECL, there are many ways to leverage a data platform and solution in these areas. Lastly, we can not only have longer term plans, but given the granularity of the data, the capability to run and rerun over many scenarios, we can develop targeted near term balance sheet management, not only as an achievable standard, but as a standard tool for the treasury and CFO to use. Statistics here don't tell this whole story, but they sure are a great road marker. The only thing that I find very interesting about this particular statistic, namely that over 90% of the world's top 50 banks use advanced analytics and planning and strategy, is that it was said in 2017. We must find real solutions to doing planning and forecasting intelligently, or surely we will be lost. Thank you very much. My name is Chris Graham. Uh, my information here to reach me if you have any questions or comments about this presentation are on the screen. And I appreciate you taking your time to view our, our material today and encourage you to view a lot of the other items on the virtual event. Thank you.